Hello, it's Linda here at Papercraft with Crafty and today I've got some instructions for you on how to put together one of these really lovely uh, chocolate treat boxes. I like chocolate and I make a lot of chocolate boxes. This is my latest design and I'm really really thrilled with it. It's designed to hold three Ferrero Rocher chocolates. Um, I specifically made it this height specifically for this particular stamp which comes from... I'll show you. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> it comes from this wonderful stamp set called Lovely as a Tree and this motif here is the one that I chose to use on this particular box. I'm going with my Christmas theme. I just felt this was a really nice height little box to show off this design to its best advantage but I also think that this will look absolutely lovely either as a little gift for somebody, maybe a dinner party gift. Um, maybe as a little place setting. Uh, but also I was thinking that you could probably um, suspend them from your Christmas tree. Um, so I mean that that's also another option. So let me just show you it. Um, I've been making my boxes of late um, quite sturdy. I've been doing double layered boxes. Um, I just think I like the sturdiness of it. I don't mind single layer boxes but I do tend to feel they can be very flimsy um, and I like the rigidity of the double layered boxes. So this one slides off like this. Okay and inside there are three Ferrero Rocher chocolates. Okay so I'm going to now show you or give you instructions on how to put one of these together. Hope you enjoy the tutorial and thank you for joining me today. Right then, for this project you need two pieces of cardstock. Now we're working first with the base piece um, and this measures six and a half by eight and a quarter inches. And you want to score at one and a half inches on, sorry I should have said on, this, on the um, side that measures six and a half inches. You want to score at one and a half inches at three at four and a half and at six and then rotate your card score at one and a half inches and five and a quarter right now before I do anything else I'm just going to burnish all of these score lines Okay, so that's the burnishing done. And now we're going to do some snipping. So, I'm going to get rid of this little corner here. And then snip up each of these score lines. And the same on the other side. And we're going to lose this little rectangle here. Okay, cut a little wedge here. Don't need that. And then on each of these longer pieces, we're going to cut a wedge out. On each side of each of these panels, just a slim wedge. Oh dear. I'm having trouble seeing what I'm doing at the moment. There we go.
Okay, so that's all of the wedging then. And you just need to flip your card back over. And you're going to put just a, a little bit of double-sided tape in the middle of each of these long panels. And a little piece down the edge here. Okay, and we're just going to stick these down now. going to do is bring this piece along across here and this is going to slot in under there like that. Okay so that's that done. That's the back of my box now, that seam. So that being so I'm going to keep this one forwards, I'm going to fold the back one in and then I'm going to wedge here And here okay and then I'm going to take your tape and I'm going to put a little bit along this bit here oh stuck it to me <laughs> stuck it to me paper right um, that's going to come across and stick there like that and then because I don't like soggy or saggy bottoms on my boxes, I'm going to put two pieces on this one. So that's going to come across like that and sit nice and flat there so nothing's bulging. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little eighth of an inch or my eighth of an inch circle punch and I'm just going to put two holes towards the centre at roughly the same height. She said, that's lousy. You're going to do much better than that. But anyway, I'm going to crack on. Um, and what have I done with my ribbon? I'm going to take some... Um, what's this? Eighth of an inch gold ribbon, which is nice and Christmassy from stamping up. And you want to make sure that you're going to have enough to go around the bottom of the box and up over the top and to tie a good bow. And once you've determined how much you think you're going to need, you can cut that off there. And then place your ribbon over the holes that you've just done on the inside. And just, just poke that through. I'm using my stylus from my Simply Scoreboard. So that goes through there and through there. Like that. Make sure I've got it fairly even. should be about right yeah so now I've established I think that's nice and even what I'm going to do is just stick this bit down okay and now that is the base done so that's ready now for the chocolates to go in and I'll show you how to make the top section. Okay, and for the top section of your box, you need a piece of cardstock that measures seven by eight and a quarter. And with the seven inch side of the cardstock along the top here of your scoreboard, you're going to score one and five eighths of an inch. 
three and a quarter, four and seven eighths, and six and a half. And you're going to flip your card round. You're going to score at one and five eighths of an inch, and at five and three eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's your scoring done. I'm just going to quickly burnish all of those score lines. Okay, so that's then burnished. Now I'm turning my cardstock round so that you've got these short squares here at the top. All right, we're going to be doing our stamping and embossing now. And what you need to ensure, if you're using something like this tree, that's you know like a proper picture, not some random pattern. This is going to be the top of your box, so you want to make sure you're stamping your tree in the right direction. If you stamp it this way up, you're going to end up with an upside down tree. Okay, so I'm just going to take my embossing bud buddy and just sweep it down each of these sections like that. I've got my Versamark pad and I'm going to load my stamp up like this and then I'm going to stamp centrally on each of these panels. So that's my stamping done. And now I'm going to add my gold embossing powder. So I am using this stamping stamping emboss powder, which is gold. And I'm just going to sprinkle it over each of the trees like this. card. Okay, I'm quite happy with the way that's come out. There's a few little pieces of, I don't know if you can see, little bits of stray powder here, which I'm just going to remove. But nothing very drastic, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to pop my powder back in the pot now and I'm going to set the images with my heat gun. So let that run a minute, for a few seconds. that done and now I'm just going to do some snipping. So I'll just flip my card around this way. We're going to use this little section here. And this little section here. And then we're going to snip down all of these outer scored sections on this side and on the other side. Okay, and then when we've done that, 
we're going to take a wedge out of each side of these long panels. So we've done that and then finally just going to take a wedge from here so your cardstock should look like that now okay and then we're just going to put some double-sided tape a little bit in the center of each of these like we did for the base some down here This now is just going to come over and it's going to just tuck just inside this lip here. I'm not sure if I made that clear when I did the base, so just so you can see. Oops. Oh dear. Not there. That's better. So, that seam will be the back of my box. Okay, so that's the back. So this bit's going to flip in here. And what I'm going to do is just cut a wedge out of this piece. And a wedge out of this piece. And I'm going to put some tape just along this wedged edge here. And stick this one down first. So that's going to go like that. And then I'm going to stick a piece down this side and down this wedge so that when all the lid of the box is constructed, everything is sitting nice and tight and flush on all sides and then I'm just going to pop a piece of tape on each of these three edges So there is the lid of the box done and I'm just going to find my base which is here and pop the lid on, where's the back gone again? So there's the back and there's the back. So both the seams here are at the back like that. Okay and then I'm just going to tie a bow on the top.
very fiddly. Right, well, it's kind of a pathetic bow. No, I think you've got to grow to expect that from me in my tutorials. Somebody needs to come up with a, a lesson for me in how to tie all sorts of bows. So anyway, there we go, that's the box done. And I'm just going to finish it off now with a few blingy embellishments. So I'm using these, which are the Jewels Basic Rhinestones. And I'm just going to pop a few on this front tree. To make it look beautiful. Dust stuck on there. Oh dear. Now, my clever husband really likes this box and he made a really wonderful suggestion in when I first showed him this and actually I think it's a brilliant suggestion. He pointed out that this type of box would actually make brilliant packaging if you're wanting to give somebody some nail varnish. So I think my next project is going to be a little nail varnish box for one of these. Um, I think it's a lovely box. Um, like I said, it's really good and sturdy. There's nothing flimsy about it. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed the project. Thank you for watching. I will be back with another uh, project for you very, very shortly. Goodbye.